go check and see what's going on with the boiler. I do need to cover this up. Yeah, we're just down to down to a very small little fire. So I can burn whatever I want in here. Just throwing in some bark, cleaning up sticks and whatever. It's an outdoor boiler, so it doesn't really matter. We don't have to worry about creosote or anything like that. Let's throw whatever we want in there. One nineteen. Perfect. So the outdoor boiler heats this really well. We're almost up to 70. I've only had a little fire going in the boiler. I saw 120. My homemade heating system for my off-grid camper. So not only can this heat water to circulate around to go into the camper and heat the camper, it actually has two other functions. If you stick with me here, I'll show you exactly why and how this works. So first off, if we look in here, so we have our fire in the bottom of this old electric hot water tank, and then we have our gas hot water tank on the top. Now the gas hot water tank is perfect for this because it has a center flue or a chimney that goes through the center of the tank. What I've done here is I've put a electric tank on the bottom and then I've put a door. So this on the bottom here is just an old electric hot water heater that's been cut and this one's been put on top of it. So what other functions can you have than heating up water and circulating it? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. But first I'll show you how I'm circulating the water. Water is in the tank or water with some antifreeze and I can fill up as much as I want. As of now, I've only been using about 14 liters. And then the water is going to come out through here. It goes through and into this circulation pump. Now this is a Vever circulation pump. I bought this pump so it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. And it works really well. Just plug in the circulation pump and it'll start circulating the water from the tank through the heater core and back to the tank. So let's plug it in. So the water's drawn through here, through the pump, through these hoses, and then they go up into the camper here through this heater core and then it circulates it back up and it pours back into the tank again very simple so I'm just testing it out so I've got it duct taped and I'm using garden hoses and but I gotta change that up and put the proper tubing and then install the lines into a proper location this is just a temporary setup but it does work so this pump has three different speeds it's on number one right now we can crank it up that's number two. As you can hear, big difference. And then number three. So it easily circulates the water around. I only use it on number one. I'm just welding a strip of metal onto the electric hot water tank. Both the tanks are exactly the same diameter. So the strip of metal basically locks the two tanks together. And then I just have a piece of steel wire going over top. So I used the tractor's loader to lift the tank up high enough. It's like an inch away. So I had the loader all the way up to the top and I had to tilt the bucket to get me that extra inch that I needed.
So there's two other functions this thing can do. So the first thing you're going to look at is you're going to wonder why there's this door here. Why is there a tank in there and what is this door for? Now that tank's empty. It doesn't have anything in it. So why is it in there? Well, first off, this wasn't originally a heating system. It actually had another purpose. So if you watch my other videos, then you would know that what this was for. Why is there a door into, into an empty tank? And on the side here, we have a pipe. Now this pipe goes from the tank and then down into the fire. So what's going on here? Our second function is making charcoal. So not only can we heat the camper, but we can make charcoal at the same time. Take this cover off, I fill it with hardwood or whatever wood I want to put in there, hardwood preferably, and then seal it up and then I start my fire. So now, once the fire starts in the bottom of here, it starts heating up the bottom of this tank. So what's going to happen is the flame's shooting up. It's going through the center of the tank, but it's hitting the propane bottle first. And because the wood is in there, and there's no oxygen, it doesn't actually burn. But the process to make the charcoal is going on. The gases are released. Yeah, it's pretty hot. It's going to then convert our wood that's inside of that tank into charcoal, so biochar. So the wood won't start converting to charcoal if you don't have a roaring fire in the bottom. If you have a small fire and then you get the fire going again and then it dies down, it will still work. So not only does this heat up water and heat the off-grid camper over there, but it also can make charcoal. You're probably not going to see many out there like this. So the third use for this heating system is right over here. Comes out of this pipe here. Now, what comes out of this pipe during the process of making charcoal is wood gas. So the wood gas is actually flammable. And there's lots of people running engines and checking for wood gas. So it's been running for a while. What you can do is you can just check to see if the gases are flammable. You want to do it with a torch. See, it's almost lighting, quite ready yet. You can see it's almost igniting but I got to keep a flame under it to keep it going. So it needs a little more time to actually get some good wood gas, but right now that gas could be burned. It's not quite ready yet. So this gas is a combination of like methane and hydrogen and other gases, and it can be funneled into an engine and it'll run. From the conversion from wood to charcoal, those gases come down through this pipe and those gases can be burned again in the bottom of the heating system. So if you look in here now, you'll see the wood gas burning in the bottom of the stove. If I open the door, then it doesn't draw it in as quickly. So from the charcoal making process, we're also burning those gases in the bottom. So because we're burning those gases down in the, the fire uh, box, then it's actually a very efficient system. Light this. It's really coming out now. There you go. So there's the wood gas. And actually, we don't want that because it's gonna it's gonna get up into. The... That is burning very nice, nice and clean. This wood gas will burn in an internal combustion engine, so a generator, a a car engine, whatever you want, will burn this fuel. Now, they actually did this in World War II, and they powered Jeeps and military vehicles because in Germany, they ran out of fuel, so that was their only way. Uh, well, was, I guess it was a backup. They had to keep the fuel for, for other things, so like a tank or something like that. They saved the fuel for, but they used the wood gas for a lot of Jeeps and, and other vehicles. You can see how it's very flammable. So if I open the door, it's not drawing it in as well but you can see it burning right there. That's the wood gas burning inside the stove. So it's recirculating it. Now you need to filter it. It looks like it's gonna start melting my cable here. Yeah. Get that, get that back on. There, it's melted the cable here. No big deal, it's just the plastic coating is Melt it off. It's a steel wire. That was going to happen anyway. Barely any noticeable smoke. And we're in the process of heating the RV 
and also making charcoal. That is why this system has three functions. Not only can it heat up water and heat up my camper, but it could also make charcoal and then it could also produce wood gas that can run a internal combustion engine. So essentially this system here could heat and power an engine for electricity. So it's three functions here. Unfortunately, I have to clean the pipe out quite a bit with this rod and then it needs a larger, be very careful, it just draws it right. 